everybody. Um, you might remember me from last year um, when we were in Glasgow and now we're in Stirling, um, which is actually where I live, so this is very handy for me. Um, so, yes, uh, I, for those who don't know, I'm the Learning Officer for Scotland's Urban Past. We are a community engagement project that's part of Historic Environment Scotland. We're in our final year now, um, but for the past four years we've been working all over the country with lots of different communities in urban areas, so 3,000 people or more. Um, and we've got a stall here today, so come and see us and have a chat with us. Um, and we've got lots of freebies and stuff to give away as well, if that helps. So, the one minute we him. Um, this is a chance for people to come up and speak for 60 seconds on a topic of their choice that we hope is loosely related to heritage in some way. Um, you can't start until I tell you to start, um, and then you have one minute to get all your information out. If you're still talking, um, when it gets to the to the final second, I will squeeze this squeaker, um, and then I will chase you off stage. So there's there's no pressure really at all. Um, so first up, uh, we've got Catherine. Where is she? That's return. You ready? You ready? Okay. Go go. So what a difference a year makes. I was here last year, uh, chucked away the script, said something entirely different and gave a call to arms. Amazing response as I walked out. Laura Hindmarch from HES said, we can give you some funding. She did. It was absolutely amazing. We had to spend it by the end of March. We more or less did. We did a survey. And we had a discussion day in Burnham, which was there, which we had 90 people sign up for. Um, and we got out a report and we thought that would be it. We thought we could maybe take a wee bit of a breath. No chance to take a breath whatsoever. The 543 people who responded to the survey kept contacting us saying, what are you doing? What's next? What's next? Can you come and talk? So it's been an incredibly busy year. Been out speaking to a lot of people. People are really involved, wanting things to happen, wanting more discussion days around Scotland. So we've just recruited a brand new committee and I'm super proud of it. We've got 10, 11 folk who are directly from grassroots organisations. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Go. So I would like to talk about a Year of Young People project that I recently started working on for Historic Environment Scotland called Celebrating Speesite, a very exciting title and a very exciting project. However, much to this me of locals, when we say Celebrating Speesite, we actually mean three distinct geographical areas, Bedenoff, Strathsby and Speesite, from the surge to the mouth of the spee. Now up here on the slide, you can see what the pupils from Newtonmore Primary see as their heritage. Because you see, our project aims to engage young people in the spee catchment with their heritage in an interesting, fun, and meaningful way. And it's very important for us to not go in there and say, well, this is the heritage we would you like you to engage with in this particular way. No, we want to go in and we want to ask them, what, is, what do you see as heritage? And how would you like to explore, celebrate, and share that heritage? So if you have anything to share with me, please do come find me later. Thanks. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted on behalf of Scotland's Archaeology Strategy to be launching our new magazine at this event. You should have one already. It's full of salacious gossip from the world of archaeology. We've got um, why disagreements about stratigraphy have split up Brad and Angelina again. Uh, we've got 10 detox tips to get that body sight heart ready. And of course, uh, plain table topple or geophys, what your favourite survey method says about your sex life. I just, of course, the magazine is really a way for us to celebrate just some of the fantastic things that people have been doing over the past year or two. And also for us to tell you what the, the strategy has been delivering and how we're bringing change to the archaeology sector. Um, you'll find in here a feedback form. It's our first time doing this. If you want us to do it again, you'll need to let us know. If you don't want us to do it again, then we definitely would. But please tell us. And if you're wondering why you're not involved, it's probably because you didn't tell us. So for <laughs> future years, if you'd love to be featured and to be celebrated in that, there's plenty of ways to do so. So come and find us at our stall in the main auditorium. And happy reading! Hi, I'm Liz. George gave me a nice little intro just a minute ago. Um, I'm working uh, on a project that's a partnership between the University of Stirling and uh, Historic Environment Scotland looking at social value. And social values are really about some of the things we've been hearing about, how the heritage plays into identity, uh, belonging, sense of place uniqueness and memory within, within communities. 
And if you've had a chance to have a look at the State of Heritage Funding Report, you'll see one of the points they make is that heritage organisations need to provide increased evidence of the impact that they're making. And that really ties into my project, which is looking at how do we assess and evidence these values? What are the methods that we can use? Um, and then how can we communicate them to funders, uh, into planning, into designation processes, etc.? Um, so I will be doing a discussion later on in the snug. If you're able to tear yourself away from other things, please come along and join me. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts, uh, any experiences, ideas you have on this. Thank you very much. Hey, well done. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Maya Darrell-Hewins. I'm a researcher and moving image preservationist and I live in Shetland. Um, I'm passionate about the importance of amateur ho artists and home movies. So uh, I'm investigating the preservation of these kind of films and the management and sustainability issues within community-led archives and heritage groups that keep this kind of material. I'm working with the Shetland Film Archive, who have been able to digitise approximately 150 items of, about and made by Shetlanders. Um, there have been and still are challenges to overcome to make this collection accessible, and this is what I'm attempting to unpick in my work. So I'm really keen to hear from anyone who collects or wants to collect audiovisual material in any form. I want to find out how people want to exhibit this work and reuse it, and also to hear about how you organise your collections, whatever their status, and any project successes or challenges uh, you have. So come and find me, have a chat. Excellent. Hello, my name is Neve. I'm a project officer of the Buildings at Risk Register for Scotland. Um, um, at HES. Um, our team is responsible for assessing and monitoring the condition of mostly listed buildings and buildings within conservation areas throughout the whole of Scotland. Um, due to the number of properties on the register and, some, and the location of some of them, it's not always possible for us to visit all of them on a regular basis, so we rely on contacts in the planning authorities, but we'd also encourage interested individuals and community groups to get in touch um, with potential buildings um, for inclusion or removal from the register. Um, it's not all doom and gloom, as the title suggests, um, and we're keen to promote that uh, three times more buildings um, on the register are saved than demolished. Um, and we're also keen to um, get people involved in, or your advice and thoughts and ideas on how the buildings at risk can be used in, as a tool in the regeneration of the uh, historic environment. So please come chat to me at our stall out in the main hall. Thank you. Right. Okay. Uh, to here to talk about the Bednoch Great Places Scheme. Uh, if you don't know where Bednoch is, it roughly stretches from Dalwini in the south on the A9 up to just south of Aviemore and bounds each side of the A9. And the problem is getting people to stop on the A9 and come there. They come to see the Highland Folk Museum, they come to see the Wildlife Park, but then they get in their car and continue their journey north or to the islands. We want to use heritage as the way to get them there, both the built heritage, like Ruthven Barracks that you see in the picture there, but also cultural heritage, music, Gaelic, literature, and of course sport. We're the home to Shinty. We've got the two best Shinty teams in the world there. Um, <laughs> we've got a lot of partners. Hi and uh, Transport Scotland as well, and... <laughs> maps, maps, maps! Are you tired of looking everywhere for heritage information? No time to look high and low, not knowing what you're missing? You need the new, improved PASHMAP! PASHMAP has always brought together information from local and national sources, but you can do so much more now. Search with old ordnance survey maps. Check. Browse using background area photos. Check. Use past map on your phone or tablet. Check. Check. <laughs> All these improvements on top of what you had before come at no extra cost. Because it's still free. <laughs> Don't delay. Try it today. Past map. All you need to know about old stuff. Pastmap.org.uk Past map is brought to you by HES and the SMR Forum. <laughs> Terms and conditions don't apply. <laughs> okay. Right, I'm Kev Seeker. For the purposes of this, I'm a trustee of the Association for Heritage Interpretation. You've got heritage 
you want to communicate about that heritage, what you're doing is interpre interpreting. You are delivering interpretation. What you need as an interpreter is contacts. You need to talk to other interpreters about how you do it, how you communicate, what are your themes, what are your messages you're wanting to get across. Good, good practice guidelines, training courses, workshops, and an annual conference. That's what you get from this. You also get an award scheme, which is open next year, and one of the areas where we had a lack of entries in the previous two rounds of the awards was community heritage. So if you're delivering heritage, you're delivering interpretation, come and talk to us. <coughs> well done. Okay, uh, as I said, I'm completely unprepared. Uh, I'm a uh, founder of the Friends of Campus Stephen Priory. That's in the Clyde Valley in Lanarkshire. And one of our sister organisations, which is run mainly through social media, which has been amazing for us because it's brought in a lot of people, is called Lost Houses of the Clyde Valley. And this is, the focus of this are the ancient estates and great mansions and castles which once lined the Clyde Valley, almost from the source, all the way into Glasgow and beyond. We focus on Lanarkshire and the Clyde Valley within Lanarkshire. And uh, if anyone's interested in seeing and finding out more, you can have a look at our Facebook page. It's a group page, which means everybody contributes to it. And we've got 5,000 people on there at the moment just contributing and bringing in photographs, memories, questions, which is one of the important things. It allows people who might maybe weren't able to ask questions about their heritage to do it in an open and friendly environment. Thank you.